I'm going to switch directions a little for you. I've mentioned before that every plant, every tree, everything that grows, everything that lives has a purpose. There's nothing that's just a weed. Um, even you have a purpose, believe it or not. And you can sit around on your butt watching TV and playing video games and drinking and smoking dope. Or you can allow the Creator to use you for the purpose that you were designed and actually benefit the world in some way. And the same is true of the plants, the trees, and the weeds. For example, right here is one of the most common uh, weeds that grows here in the in the American Southwest from about central Arizona and south. See, and, and if you read about this, you'll discover that, well, you know, it's not edible. So if it's not edible, then what's it good for? <laughs> Remember, it's good for something. Everything that grows, everything that lives has a use. So you will find out if you go to a book that I would recommend which is called Herbal Medicine of the American Southwest by Charles W. Kane, uh, you'll find that this is a medicine plant. So the best way to use herbal medicines out of the plants and the weeds that grow out here is probably to follow the advice of Mr. Kane. The second best way would be just to do it the way I do it, which is the method for people who do things on the fly by the seat of their pants. Okay, so first of all, we're going to take a good look at this plant, which is called Canyon Ragweed, or Canyon Versage. It's got other names too, every plant does. Uh, and we're going to talk about exactly what it looks like, the details, and then how to use it. So, when you're studying these plants, the first thing to ask yourself is, what is it? If you see some plant that looks interesting to you, so you got to find out what the plant is. But it's called, and then once you know what it's called, do a little research to figure out what it does. So these little, these are little flower, little flowers that'll grow here, and then those flowers later will turn into, um, they'll turn into these little burrs. The best time, I'm told, to use to harvest the leaves and the roots from this plant would be. When, it, when it's very aromatic, you can smell uh, a distinct smell of ambrosia. So, what is the plant used for? Well, the first thing I do is turn to ethnopharmacology. That is, what did the natives, because this is a native plant here of the American Southwest, uh, it's indigenous to this area, so what did the people who lived here use this plant for? Because it wasn't just voodoo magic. It was thousands of years of making teas and, and, and foods out of different types of plants and roots and leaves and whatever, and <clears throat> discovering that if somebody had a stomach ache, ooh, you know, drinking this tea fixed it. And so that information would be passed down and you'd have people whose, whose main interest was knowing what the medicines are and how to deal with everything from headache to menstrual cramps and whatever. So. Um, they had a pretty good knowledge of the plants uh, that, they, that they lived around because in those days what people did here at least in this continent is that they adapted to the land. These days we, we try to make the land adapt itself to us. For example our favorite foods are you know the vegetables we like are corn and asparagus and green beans and, and whatever so then we're gonna force the land you know to, to make those things we're going to force those crops to grow here and if they, we can't grow them here then we're going to import them rather than adapting to the land and saying well what grows here <laughs> right and so the same is true with the medicines uh, what the pharmaceutical companies do of course is they go why does this plant work um, what is it about this plant that causes it to work as a medicine and so they do some scientific research with millions of dollars of your tax money to find out why it is that the plant works. And then they go through some chemical process of, of trying to fake that in a laboratory to make a pill that's got a high concentration of whatever uh, works in that natural plant that grows that God made uh, and then sell that pill to you and make you think that you have to buy their crap in, in the, that we all need to pay for your health insurance 
uh, because you just can't go out and learn what plants grow around you and, and how to use those to do the same thing for free. So let's talk about canyon ragweed. Uh, what does it do? Well, I, I'm sure the first thing you think of is, is it creates allergies. It's a medicine to do that, to make you sneeze. Now, actually, it does the opposite of that. Uh, the first thing that you need to know about canyon bursage is that it's used as a what would the word be an anti-allergenic so if you're having allergic reactions of whatever kind whether it's you know in your head or or you're breaking out in hives and rashes uh, it's useful so we're told for that so uh, the next thing it does is that it can be useful according to the ancient people who used it for any kind of like a stomach cramp, for example, menstrual cramps, like I mentioned, uh, or uh, stomach fluttering from from either a virus, like a, a flu virus or something, or from uh, stress-induced diarrhea. So if you've got stomach aches or cramps or allergies or whatever, see this plant can be used for that, so we're told. now. We have to be very careful because these government agencies like the USDA uh, are really cracking down on natural medicines. So I have to tell you, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a pharmacist and I'm not um, licensed to practice medicine or to, to, get, to tell you, you know, you have this sickness and here's the cure. I'm not allowed to do that by law. I can probably go to jail uh, or something. So I'm just telling you what I've been told that this plant was used for. Uh, another thing it was used for, by the way, for you smokers um, who just, you know, there's a lot of addictive people out there who just start doing stupid things when they're, you know, 12 or something like smoking and you're addicted to smoking. And uh, did you know that there are a lot of plants that grow in the natural, in the wild <clears throat> that people uh, used to you know, dry the leaves and basically smoke them the same way you would roll a cigarette and guess what? Canyon bursage, canyon ragweed is one of those. Uh, they used to dry the leaves and, 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 and smoke them. So whether that's as good as tobacco or not, I, I don't know. Um, whether it's <laughs> whether it gives you, uh, makes you feel groovy or not, I don't know. I don't smoke anything, but I'm just saying it's free and it's legal. So you could try it out and see if you can save some money. And Well, the, the better way to do that would be quit smoking. Anyway, so let's talk about how to use it now. Uh, to get at the roots, I'm trying to, trying to get a plant that's going to be easy to get to, and I hope this is because it's in the sand. Um, these plants do grow in sandy washes. Okay, so when you're trying to dig out the roots, first of all, never kill you know, don't pull up the entire taproot of a plant because you want the plant to continue growing and giving us the benefit of what it what it has. So, you're well into the future. So, here. Okay. Put that aside and I'm going to get more. And now that I've told you not to ever do this, I'm straightway doing it. Because I found a young, young plant that's easy to get to, <laughs> and pull out the entire half root, take the whole plant, leaves and the root. Take the, the top and just brush down against the opposite directions that are growing. And it's usually the easiest way to get leaves off of a plant. So kind of getting all the dirt out of them. Okay, so I'm going to give you the general rule and the best way to get the to get the value out of your herb is to eat it fresh right off the plant <laughs> you know just pick it and eat it 
Uh, and then what you're looking for, it's, you know, wh whatever you need, it goes directly into your system. Um, these leaves, as far as the leaf, um, tastes like a cockroach's butt crack. So we'll make tea out of it. Or the, or the root. <laughs> Let me try the root. Let me, I'll, I'll tell you what it tastes like. First of all, can't chew it. Um, it's a stick of wood. So the second best way to get the benefit of an herbal plant or root is to to dry it because you're going to boil it to get the uh, the elements out of it that you need to make you well. So if you boil it when it's fresh and green, those things that you need, the, the whatever vitamins or whatever minerals that you want, are going to cling to the plant material and they're not going to let go. If you dry it first, uh, then everything is ready just to break away. So you want those nutrients, you want those elements that you need to break away from the plant material and get into the water. So then you strain it and drink the water. Ooh, and I almost forgot. Just because you can't eat something, like I said, the root is just like wood, doesn't mean you can't chew it. So hypothetically, while you were hiking, if you were on the run, you could, you know, get a piece of the root, clean it off, you know, wipe it off, whatever, and chew on it as you go, and you may get the health benefit that you need on the fly, which is the way I do things, is it not? All right, it's about, I don't know, maybe four days later or something from the time that I left these to dry. There's a lot of ways to dry leaves. You could hang them upside down from rafters on the branches. Uh, you can spread them out on something to dry. I used uh, <laughs> a grate. So, I'm going to make an infusion. It's just a basic herbal tea for allergies. An infusion of the leaves. Now the difference between an infusion and decoction. An infusion is for the delicate parts of the plant, like uh, leaves, flowers, and it just you just bring the water to a boil, uh, remove the water from the fire, put your leaves, flowers, whatever in there and let it steep for 15 minutes, then pour it through some strainer and drink it like a tea or, or use it as a wash, whatever it's being used for. A decoction is for the heavier, thicker, harder parts of the plant, like the roots, bark, uh, you know, the heavy stems or whatever. And so that just takes about twice as long. You bring the water to a simmer and you put the, uh, the roots, bark, whatever, in the water and let it simmer for 15 minutes. Then remove it from the water and let it sit for another 15 minutes. So my water is almost boiling. Good enough, it's boiling. I'm not even going to pretend to fit in like a doctor amount, uh, recommended amount of leaves, okay? Not even pretending. I'm just going to throw some in there. The typical uh, infusion might be an ounce of plant matter for a quart of water. Not necessarily. For this, I've seen a recommendation of two to four ounces of, uh, of leaves and, uh, you know, uh, three times daily or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to let it uh, steep for 15 minutes again. And uh, once again, I'm not going to even pretend to be prescribing you dosages or anything because that's not, I'm not allowed to do that. All I'm doing is making a tea. And when we're steeping, good idea to cover it if you can. And once again, I would highly recommend so that uh, I don't get in trouble for playing doctor or, or pharmacist is that for your area, wherever you live, get a book like this. This is Herbal Medicine of the American Southwest, Charles W. Kane, as I said before. And it's a really good idea because he'll have a lot of detail about usages for these specific types of herbs and dosages and stuff like this whereas I'm not giving you those details I'm giving you the crapshoot on the run sort of stuff and once again also I would remind you you may benefit 
as well or better say if you were on a hike and you were breaking out you know or having some allergic reaction you may just take a bunch of fresh leaves off the plant wad them up into a ball and chew on them and try it and see if it works I'm not saying it will I'm just saying try it now I probably didn't get enough roots doesn't matter and when you're drying roots it's a good idea when they're larger roots to split them I don't think this root matters because it's a small root not a small plant I've been letting this tea steep for about 25 minutes now. Me, the longer the better. But uh, just because I'm drinking this for the weird flavor. I'm going to use for a strainer some prickly pear skeleton pieces that I've rinsed. And that's got a good green color. So, so far we're in business. And now, cheers, is definitely different. Not what you'd expect from a store, for sure. <laughs> Reminds me kind of, of of dandelion tea or something. Uh, if you had a sweetener in here, it would actually be pretty good. Yeah, I could down this. Got it simmering at our roots. Let it simmer for 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes is up. So people are shooting at me. Deservedly so. So I'm gonna cover it and let it steep for another 15 minutes. That's a good color again. And the uh, the the taste, the flavor is actually uh, is actually quite a bit better than the leaves. Good enough that it could be a commercial tea, actually. But shh, don't tell any big corporations. I want to take a moment to thank the amazing person who several hundred years ago or more brought me this gift left it for me so it will be very useful and very helpful and I thank you and I also need to thank the creator for allowing it to, to end up in the in the riverbed and get washed up and end up on top at just the right moment in just the right place so this will be an amazing help somebody spent a lot of time uh, grinding things on this rock until it's the shape that it is right now so for the rest of you, just remember to honor and respect the people who brought us here and, uh, and not forget them because they haven't forgotten you.